Hello, beloved family. How are you doing today? So today's video, I want to talk about types of spirituality. This is a topic that actually really came to me because of some comments on the last video that I posted, the, uh, the Transformation of Jordan River testimonial video that I made. And there were two comments in particular uh, that, that sort of struck uh, the inspiration for this conversation. And it's very relative to spirit science and the book of spirit and um, some of the topics that uh, I'm going to be continuing to speak about um, moving forward. So uh, let's let's just look at first like the first two questions or the, the, these comments what they were. Uh, the first one was how did you find Jesus and which interpretation of Jesus are you re referring to? You know, is it the traditional Jesus is the guy and the King of Heaven and all that, or is it more of like the Gnostic interpretation and where Jesus is an idea, something for us to embody? And the second question was. Why are you columbusing indigenous spirituality with your pseudo-Christianity? So, to answer the first question, it's like, you know, that how did you find Jesus and which interpretation actually relates with a friend of mine that you many of you are probably familiar with. This friend who was very involved in spirit science for a long time and then quit because he found Jesus. And he, he tells this story, he has this whole new age to Jesus uh, blog and he tells this story about how he you know was humbled by by Christ who came to him and basically slapped him for uh, being materialistic and for spending all of his money on basically himself uh, you know his 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 fancy car and house mansion or whatever and all of this stuff he interpreted it however he did but part of that interpretation was uh, that all of New Age spirituality and everything like that was bad or wrong or evil or anything like that. And this was this was a turning point for me as well because this was a, he's a very good friend of mine or was for a really long time. And when he had that experience, I was like, I'd like to know more actually. So I started reading and I started researching and learning about Jesus. Christ, Christ consciousness, the, the, the spirituality of Christianity and in all of its forms, because there's so many. And I want to express to you, like, I'm a very open person. I love to learn in general. And speaking to spiritualities, I love to learn all kinds of spiritualities. I love to learn all about them and see how they fit together in all the ways that they, that they do. Like if, if you're familiar with, um, for a while I was making a series called Minute Faith, and that whole show is dedicated to exploring the world spiritualities and, and talking about them openly. But as it relates with, with Jesus and Christianity, the two sides, right, it's like Jesus is living, he's here and now, and then Jesus is an idea and something for us to embody. And I've come to unify those within myself. Um, I had an experience at Rhythmia at the end of my third trip there where I had set my intention on, on ascension. And the, the, the experience ended, the very, very end of it, I, I actually like, it was the, the end of the final ceremony. It was like nine in the morning because you go all night on that last one. And after the closing circle, I went and got some rapé, which is a, uh, a supportive plant medicine that is, um, kind of like a tobacco powder that a shaman will actually like blow into each nostril in your nose. And it's very powerful stuff. It's it's very interesting. Um, it's not like cocaine for the record, but it, it, it goes in the nose in a similar way, I guess. But I had this this experience and um, and I was lying down just sort of in this, this blissed out daze of, um, like what a powerful moving night that was. But the end of that experience, I actually saw this being of light. Like I, I saw Jesus come over my body. It's just this, this body of light. And he held up his hand to my heart and he said, your experience is complete. And I had this experience of then seeing him or feeling him sitting on the throne of my heart, which was made out of the onk, the, uh, this guy, which was planted in my heart two ceremonies prior, or two actually two trips to Rhythmia prior. And so um, it had sort of, he had sort of transformed this shape. It was still an ankh, but now it was also a throne and he sat on it. 
and I felt him in my heart and was just like kind of blown away by that and my ego had a little bit of like a no my experience is not over uh, I, I, let's keep it going you know it was sort of was sort of a feeling that I had that was a very powerful experience and the 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 understanding in these all of these experiences at Rhythmia and my meditations and everything have led me to really come to know Christ in a in, in an intimate way both as the Gnostic and the literalist perspective meaning like honestly I don't find that it matters whether or not Jesus physically lived or not because the body of light that he is the the reflection of pure consciousness that he embodies, that he is, is very real and alive and available to all of us. And so speaking to that, you know, this is like, this is the dichotomy that I have with the people who speak to Christ as being exclusively this separate being is that it, it keeps Jesus separate. It keeps Christ as something that is unexperienceable by each of us. And that's the part that I wanna to speak to because <laughs> Christ is the pure conscious spirit, love, virtue, joy, harmony that we can all embody, that we have the potential and the capacity to live by that code, that goodness, that virtue. And when people say that you know, anything that's not exclusively Christian is evil, I say, no, I'm sorry. That's actually not true. I know that it's not true because I've experienced it myself. I know that this guy right here is just as virtuous because his whole teachings is love and compassion and virtue. And it's like, if Jesus was to just be walking around today, there is no way I could ever possibly see him saying that meditation or yoga or you know any of these these new age spiritual practices or eastern practices that didn't originate with christianity is evil i can't see jesus saying that in any way like if your practice is naturally virtuous by the by the goodness in your heart that you are living by then that's it. I mean, there's actually a passage for, for those who want to, yeah, now I want to say, for those who are going to start throwing Bible quotes at me. Um, there's a passage in the book of Revelations that actually says that all of the, the people who are a part of Christ's body, essentially, or all, all of these people are, who, are, who are angels of Christ, they are not exclusively Christian. They're all like wearing white robes, but they're people of all nationalities all their people from around the world and the, it's like those are the people that, that is describing it's like it, it's not about what religion you follow it's not about what you know what what specific path you take you're not going to go to hell if you choose hinduism over you know christianity Honestly, in so many ways, Hinduism is purer than Christianity because there's a lot less child molestation in the churches. Yeah, I went there. So it's like all of the paths up the mountain lead to the same summit. All spiritualities are intimately connected and intertwined and a part of the same unified thing. And like, it doesn't really matter what you believe, just devote yourself to the practice and may it be a virtuous one. If your practice involves hurting people or judging others or abusing and taking advantage of people, those actions and practices are not conducive to a harmonious way of life and they will not survive in the new paradigm. We have to move into a new paradigm. We are moving into a new paradigm. This is a transition. It's gonna take some time. And it can be hard if you're attached to being right. If you're attached to having the information and the answers and believing that that is the only way. And that, that probably is like the biggest thing with traditional Orthodox Christianity is that it says, you know, this is the only way that you will find salvation. Okay, but the this, 
that you're identifying this is the only way, that this encompasses a very, very wide array that all boils down to one thing, virtue. You could say it in another way. You could say truth, love, and authenticity are the basis of what it means to live a Christ-centered life. Have I answered the other? Th oh yeah, the second question. Let's go into that, that's very good. Why are you Columbusing indigenous spirituality with pseudo-Christianity? The response that I responded to this person with was, I'm very simply uniting all practices that resonate with my heart within me. Sometimes I may speak more about uh, from a Christianity-centered perspective, or perhaps a more Buddhist-centered perspective, or a shamanic, indigenous-centered perspective. And I'm doing my best to learn to speak from a, a, a unified place within me so that all of them resonate to the same place. Because I love indigenous spirituality. I love all of the Eastern spiritualities. I love Christianity, the parts of it that are genuine and authentic, and there's a whole conversation there because there's a lot of misinformation. You know, looking into the future, I think when all is said and done and the times have changed and when things have shifted, I don't think Christianity is gonna exist at all in the same way that it does. And that's probably true for most religions because we'll have a different outlook on the world. We'll look at everything in a much more unified way. And by doing that, we'll come to just a much more harmonious perspective. We can listen to and learn from every source without having to, you know, judge or criticize or be cruel towards others for having different beliefs other than ourselves. And so I think that's, that's where I want to end this video. So thank you everybody so much for watching this and um, may you have a most blessed and beautiful day, night, week, life. So the end. I don't know how to do life, you can't really, it's a what? And death, I guess, yeah. <laughs> All right, well with that, we'll see you next time. Ciao.